So I have the assets here, which if you unzip the zip file, you will find a folder which contains two subfolders for fonts and sprites. And what I'm gonna do, so I'm just gonna drag those two folders into my, I'll just show the window so you can see me doing it. I'll drag the fonts and the sprites folders into the project folder. That's gonna import those. And we're going to start by working with the sprites. Now, the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to bring in is our bird hero. Now, if you've set this up correctly in having your project in 2D mode, these should be brought in automatically as sprites, as single sprites. But in this case, there's an additional factor for the bird hero, which is that there are actually three sprites in this one file. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch our sprite mode to multiple and apply that. And then we're going to open the sprite editor. The sprite editor is gonna allow us to cut out each of these sprites individually. And we're gonna do that using the slice tool here. So the type being automatic is fine. It'll guess accurately where the sprites are. So all we need to do is hit slice. And we can see these bounding boxes show us where the sprites have been cut out and that looks great. So we're just gonna go ahead and apply those changes and close the sprite editor. Now, if we expand our bird hero, we'll see that we now have three separate sprites which we can use. And we're gonna use these uh, to animate our bird, which we will do uh, a little later in the session. We're gonna start by just dragging in our bird hero zero sprite directly into the hierarchy. Dragging it into the hierarchy will position it at zero, zero, zero at the center of our world or origin. And so we're gonna start by getting our bird in. We're gonna name him bird. And then we're gonna bring in our grass and our sky. So I'm gonna grab next the grass thin sprite, drag it up and drop it in the hierarchy. And this needs to be positioned a little bit. So we're gonna just drag it down until the bottom is more or less aligned with the bottom of the game view. I recommend working in this kind of a two by two layout so that you can see both the scene and the game view. And I did that just by dragging on the Y field in the transform. So something like negative 2.5 should be good for that. Next, we're gonna bring in our sky background and this I'm gonna drag on top of the grass thin sprite. And that is going to cause it to become a child of it so that we can move them together once we start moving the elements of our level. I'm going to rename the grass thin sprite ground. Now, as you can see, things have gone a little bit wrong. Our sky is now in front of our ground and our bird, and that's not the way we want it. So we are gonna set this up using what are called sorting layers to position which sprites are in front of the others relative to the camera. So the first thing that we're gonna do is position the sky tile sprite. So make sure that that's selected. And then we're gonna to go to the sorting layer menu, which is in the sprite renderer component attached to that game object. And we're going to click on it and choose add sorting layer. Now there's always gonna be a default sorting layer, which is always the bottom most or furthest from the camera. And then as we add new layers, those will be in front of that default layer. So what I'm gonna do is add a layer called background, which is gonna be the layer that the sky is gonna be on. Then we're gonna have a mid-ground layer and a foreground. Now we need to assign our sprites to these layers. So the sky tile sprite is gonna be assigned to the background and we can rename this just to sky background. And the ground is going to be on the foreground layer so that it will be in front of the sky. Next, we're gonna take our bird and assign them to the foreground layer as well. So now we've got things sort of positioned relative to the camera correctly. And the next step is going to be to add some physics components to our scene. So we have the 
what we want is we want the bird to be able to fall down and hit the ground. So right now, nothing has a rigid body or a collider on it, which are the components that we need to set up our 2D physics. So we are going to go ahead and start by adding a rigid body 2D component to our bird so that it can be affected by the 2D physics simulation. So we're going to choose add component, navigate to physics 2D, and choose rigid body 2D. The default settings for the bird are fine. If we hit play, we'll see that our bird falls off the scene, but they fall right through the ground, which is not what we want. So we need to add colliders to both the bird and the ground so that we can detect collisions between them. Let's start by adding one to the bird since he's already selected. With the bird selected, we're gonna choose add component. Again, physics 2D, and we're gonna add a polygon collider 2D. What this will do, if we zoom in on our bird using the mouse wheel, we'll see it's a little bit difficult to see, but this green line has been added around the bird sprite. And what it's done is it sort of traced the outline of the sprite and added a collider that follows that outline. And in this case, it's done it in basically an appropriate way. And so we can leave it as it is. It's possible to edit it as well, but in this case, that's not necessary. The next thing that we need is a collider for our ground. We're going to select the ground game object, choose add component, physics 2D, and choose a box collider 2D. Now in this case, we can see this green box has been added. Again, it's a little bit difficult to see against the blue, but it's not positioned in an appropriate place. It's much too high. So the first thing that we're gonna do is adjust the size along the Y axis here in the box collider 2D component. We're gonna drag down till it's about 2.5, and then we're going to pull it down using the offset Y property to about, let's say, negative 1.4. So in this case, now the ground is aligning with the line of the ground. I've placed it below the grass. And now we should be able to play and test. And we can see that our bird falls down onto our grass and things appear to be working correctly. So now that we have some kind of very basic physics set up, the next step is going to be to write a script which is gonna control the bird and allow him to jump up and down so that he can navigate through our scrolling world. Let me just take a quick look at the chat before we move on to that next topic.